This is my virtual case caddis. You can do it in various different colours and styles, but uh, what I want you to do today is just see the technique. You can use it on a jig hook, caddis hook, any size you want. You can be as fancy or as plain. You don't need to add legs. That's another style of doing the legs, and I've also coloured the, uh, the, the body of the, the bug on this green. It's more of a kind of granum. I would normally do this much smaller, maybe on a 16. So I'm going to do this on a 12 today, uh, just for the ease of seeing it in the camera. This is a size 12 Fasner clink hook. It's a lovely shape. You could use any kind of caddis style hook. Plenty on the market. This is too heavy for an actual clink hammer. It would just sink. Uh, gauge is too heavy. Now, on this, I don't like using um, a tungsten bead. So what I do is I wrap my red wire, put the lead wire on a, a bobbin and it's much easier to put on. You can get it on nice and tight onto the, the shank of the hook. So maybe about 20 turns. You really want to load up. Depend on the size of the hook, obviously. Take it right up. Maybe about 20 tons. 20 tons of lead, medium lead wire is only the equivalent of about a 2.5 mil tungsten bead. So you're not really adding an awful lot of weight. It looks like it. All you really get with lead wire is bulk. And that's why I don't like it. Um, so, we're going to cover that with Unistretch. It's the easiest way I've found to cover wire quickly. And it also doesn't... See if you put your tag up the length of the lead wire, it stops the thread from sinking into all the different segments of the each turn of the lead wire just take that off of the front the uni stretch in white is more to give you the underbody when you're doing the actual grub that's coming out the front so twist your thread away from you which flattens it out and bring it down onto the shank of the hook and quite a bit round the bend and then back up And then we'll just flip it off. This is a good all round pattern for the whole year. Good for grailing and for trout. Right, so what we want to do now is add our virtual nymph skin, it's the same as the, if you've, any of you have watched the video for the garden fly and that, it's, it's pretty similar to that. So you get your virtual nymph skin, uh, Dale, Dale Rushby sells it in England, the virtual nymph, but I think there's quite a few stockists of it, it's lovely stuff, this is a natural translucent in 3mm. Now we tie this in with, um, I use 12 watt nano silk for nearly all my tying, it's just a nice thickness it's very very strong one two three is enough to lock it in as I say always use a scalpel scissors just free it get your point spin your thread towards you which tightens it up gets you a better grip just right on the point one two firm wraps holds it in pull it up Doing it too slow. One, two, pull it back off the hook and then bring your thread up to the tie off point which is about just about a third of the way up. Now if you just wrap it on like that, that will give you the caddis. You can maybe, I'll just show you it later, see that gives you the cream colour and then what I'll do today is I'll show you the green more of a kind of granum. I'm not too much up my ent entomology, but I'm pretty sure this is a kind of standard bug. I think they even have it in America, etc. Obviously the case might change depending on your river as well. Up, up in Scotland they're very, very dark. The cases 
and I just put a wee spot of black just to kind of accentuate the head when you give them a squeeze on the rubber you'll see them coming out and they're it's just like a wee black head bright bright green and then you see the legs coming out so a couple of turns now different to the garden fly and in and, and the just the normal caddis you want to pull this really tight because you want the head to be quite small and very translucent when you think how a natural grub looks it's you've got an outer coating and then you've got some kind of color or pigment underneath and I think this is the best way to replicate that by using the translucent numb skin and the color underneath very very natural looking so just put a couple of turns over there to lock it pull your numb skin down at the road this is going to get covered up and then just cut that off and that's your head done so just make sure that's all tied in there's no build up with the nano silk so you can just make sure that that's nice and secure now what you want you can use partridge all different things maybe even rubber um, for legs um, but this time I'm going to use pheasant tail and um, that's the fibres there now what you do is you just rip them you just rip them off down the actual main stem of the feather like that and then it gives you the wee feet so you want I wouldn't say any more than three each side you want them if anything on the bottom I would say on the side kind of turn towards the bottom now what you do is you just get them kind of lined up hold them offer them up and do two loose turns now and you kind of see it there but I, I keep my bobbin short so that it's off the table so the full weight I mean, I'll try and move the camera so you can see so you've got the full weight of the bobbin taking up the tension I'll try and reposition that that looks ok right so you've got two loose turns pull the legs back to length you want them quite short don't need to be ultra fussy I don't think a grelin is going to come by and say oh the legs don't look right I'm not going to eat that and then turn it round get your other three I find it's easier if you kind of put it on its side again catch them up you'll see what will happen with these in a second again two loose turns get your length make sure that they're at the kind of correct an angle so they're nicely down each side now if you watch this because the body's nice and soft if you just pull on your numb skin nice and tight you see that I'll let, I'll let, let the, thre the tension off the thread again you just pull that in it flares the, the legs out gives you a really nice effect and they're not going anywhere so what we do now is just get the legs back out the road a couple of turns just to secure them in and then all we need to do now is put the dubbing on again body down to you try and match the match the hatch um, just whatever colours in your river for the actual nymph and the body now what I do just to be a bit I like to be belts and braces just colour that in it touch just stops it shining through the dubbing you could change the colour of thread but with an anise silk you can colour that up and the uni stretch takes colour really well this is just a brown sharpie pen as I say you don't need to do this but and then what I do is rather than change threads just put some brown ink it takes it really really well I hardly use any other thread but white now because you can just colour it up with a sharpie now the dubbing comes from England uh, Andrew Ellis 
and uh, this particular one is called uh, Highland Peat. It's a lovely looking mixture. If I can find it. That's it there. It's got UV and it makes up different colours but it's a really nice dubbing and it's got loads of UV through it. It's very nice to dub. It's very soft. So what you do is you just put on your nice dubbing rope. Now when you're putting on dubbing, just get a big lump in your finger and then just tease it off the top round about your thread, always turning it the same way. So I'm going anti-clockwise here, it's up to the individual. But you need to go the one way, you can't do back and forth or whatever. So that, you know, I'll try and show you that rope. So that should be enough as do the full flying a winner. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Now you want to bring it up right up to the legs. Oh, I'm just nearly hitting the camera, it's all right. Right up to the legs and then come back. It's a bit loose, so I'll come back off. Make it a bit tighter than that. So just don't panic, just keep your tension in your thread, get it a bit thinner down, that's better. There. And just come in at the back with a whip. Three or four turns. One, two, three, four. Now, that's the fly finished. Now, if we were to leave it like that, It would probably float. So what I do is just give it a wee trim. Just watch you don't cut your just cut the predominance of the hair that's loose. Get a smaller pair. Just takes a bit of the bulk off. You can take your time and you try to rush a bit for the video. Now what we do there is, as I say, that would probably float. Now what I've found that since I started using this Solar Ultrathin, Ultra Thin, as the name suggests, it's obviously ultra thin. So, so what I do is I use a art brush, load up the brush and because this stuff's so thin it really soaks it and it obviously makes the dubbing a lot darker but it doesn't waste the UV you'll see that when I put the torch on it so just dab that on now what that does is it fills up the air pockets and it's still got that buggy spiky effect but it actually firms it right up once you hit it at the top so a good dab of that and then just give the head a little coat and then when that hits the you see that when it hits the numb skin it really makes it shine through and makes it really really buggy looking I hope you can see that it really does stand out. Now wait till you see this dubbing when you, the torch hits it. It's just got so many, wait and I'll put off the, this light. See if you can see the, there that's showing it up. See the UV there. And really, just it's not a lot, just, just adds that wee, that wee bit. See as I say you're hitting it with the torch. It doesn't lose any of the buggy look, but what that does is, is it takes all the air out of it, and although it's not that heavy, 
that's pretty solid now. So that's my um, virtual Cadis and Granum if you tighten it a bit smaller. Thanks for watching.